could this one piece of software replace Lightroom and Photoshop? We're going to find out. So Skylim, the makers of Luminar Neo, contacted me asking me if I'd like to take a look at Luminar Neo. I said yes. The last time we looked at their software, it didn't quite work properly, but that was back on my old system, which was an absolute pile of <laughs> But now I'm on a Mac, so I thought I'll give this software another look. And on the initial thoughts, they've made leaps and bounds from the last version to the version I'm using now. So Skylim are the sponsor of this video. And if you want to take a look at Luminar Neo yourself, you can click on the QR code here or go into the description below and click on the link and have a look. And if you do wish to buy and you purchase the annual license, you can save a further 10% by using the coupon code StuartWoodArt. Well, let's take a look at this software now and let's see if this could be a replacement for Lightroom and Photoshop. So when we open up Luminar, we have a nice user interface. Over the left hand side, we have basically our library. This is where all our images are, where we can keep our sorted out folders, things like that. You can notice here, I have one that's called focus stacking. So if I do any focus stacking, I can put the results straight into that folder. The version I'm using here is Luminar Neo, and I also have all of the extensions installed. And these extensions come as add-ons to Luminar Neo. The extensions we have is a HDR merge, noiseless AI, upscale, background removal, focus stacking, we're gonna put that to the test, ultra sharp, magic light, and panorama stitch. You also have a marketplace, so you can download presets, you can download uh, skies, LUTs, and overlays. So quickly and easily, you can access a marketplace. There's also an X membership, so uh, on a monthly fee, you can also have this membership where with the monthly fee, you can download all of these here. And there are some very nice ones in there. Well, now maybe I should make some macro presets for Luminar. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Now, some of those I don't particularly use because I am a macro photographer and we will be focusing on the software from a macro photographer's point of view but i also will be taking one of my old spider shoot photos through an edit as well just to show you what it can do so you import your images over on the left hand side here and this is basically the exact same setup i have in lightroom this so can come down here we can click on any of these images and it will load it up and we can start editing it let's come back up because i have a folder prepped already to take you through some of the stuff that I like to do. Let's go to the damselfly. So this is 100 images of a damselfly that we need to stack. This is possibly the worst case scenario when it comes to focus stacking. I'm gonna take these images and I'm gonna throw them into the focus stacking software and let's just see if it can handle it. We're going to select all of these images. I'm going to select the focus stacking. Let's get rid of the uh, upscale and you are limited to 100 images in luminar neo for focus stacking that might be a limitation for some people so what we do is we select all those images we click and drag into the focus stacking and there is no configuration to do there's no options that you configure luminar will automatically just stack it the best way it can once the image is loaded we'll just click stack and we'll give it a few minutes to put it to work it's magic Let's talk about the focus stacking while it's doing that. Focus stacking is a multi-layered composition on landscapes or macro photos with different focusing points. So if you don't know, we take a series of images of the same subject, moving the focus point backwards, and then we stack all that together to create one sharp, seamless photo. And I said before, Luminar Neo is doing all of this calculation in the back end. You don't really need to do nothing. You don't need to know how to use the software. You just click and drag and it just stacks it. It would be a great starting point for someone who's new to macro and doesn't want to get into the whole um, sharpness, the smoothing, the radius settings and all that type of stuff. You can just click and drag it into Luminar and it will just stack it for you. That is actually quite an advantage for someone who's new at doing macro photography. It will also automatically align and crop the images for you as well. So when we're done, it automatically bangs our image into the focus stacking folder. And then we can click on that and we can start to edit it. We can do an upscale if we want to. I'm not going to do that. Generally, I don't upscale any of my images. Uh, megapixels ain't really a concern of mine. What I do like to play with, though, are the presets. So I'm going to come down to the macro presets. Let's have a look at nature. 
All we need to try the presets is hover over them. It will give us a preview. So sun is small. Looks quite good. Distinctive drops does as well. Out of all those, I'm going to go with distinctive drops. So I'm just going to click on it. We'll leave it at 100% and now we go over to edit. We have a lot of AI features within this software. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to AI features, and this goes for any piece of software, they're not really trained on macro images. So they don't really recognize the insects or anything like that. Not like if you're doing portraits, the AI is trained to see people. It's not really trained for insects. So at the moment, I don't really do much AI when it comes to this, but we are going to have a little bit of a play now. What I want to do is I'm going to come to the develop. And what we want to do is boost the shadows because it is a little bit dark. Let's boost those up. Pop the exposure a little bit. There we go, let's zoom in and have a look. And the same with any other stacking software. There are stacking errors. I'm not going to go through and fix those because the video would be about three or four hours long. I'm just going to quickly do the basic edits I would normally do before fixing those errors. And you can see the errors like around the water drops here. But it has done a good job stacking it though. I'm actually quite surprised with that. What I'm going to do is let's come to the color. Uh, we're going to bump up the saturation a little bit. I've been tending to use a lot of saturation in my images lately. Just really vibrant colors. We're going to do the same as well. The sharpness, I want to come up to super sharp. And I'm going to do a low AI sharpening on this image. I like this little thing that comes up while you're waiting. Look, follows your mouse around. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's zoom in. So you can see there how that has sharpened the image. Ordinarily, I don't sharpen much. And most of the time, I'll be honest with you, I'm mostly sharpening Pacific areas. So what we want to do there is if we come to the mask and we're going to do a radial mask, and I'm only going to sharpen around the head. So let's invert that. And there we go. So if I come down here, we should have it not very sharp. Yeah, no change there. But if we come up to his face, you can see there that's before and that's after. You can see there how it's sharpened up that image. And it's only been applied to the head, not the whole image, because the out of focus areas we don't want to be sharp. I want to denoise this a little bit. So let's zoom in, have a look at say the background a little bit. We've got some noise in here. This is mainly because of the stacking, and I do generally denoise before I stack. But we're going to see what what the AI can do with that. That's not bad at all, actually. Yeah, I'd go for medium. See there. With the medium, we've got a little bit of noise, so it doesn't look plastic and fake, but at the same time, it has reduced that noise. Okay, coming back to the develop, what I want to do is come back to develop here. It is non-destructive editing, so you can see here how uh, all of our stuff is here. We've done develop. Yeah, the last one we did was noiseless. They got the super shop develop, details, enhance, and all that. Um, these ones here were placed on using the preset so it is non-destructive editing so i'm going to come down to a vignette let's put a vignette on there i do like my vignettes out about there okay and we are still a little on the dark side so i'm going to boost those shadows up again not too much to you not too much now we have the erase tool this is you got remove power lines remove dust spots Let's click on that and see what happens. I don't think it's going to work. It's a stacked image, but you never know. The, the spots I can see that are down here, they are not there because of dust spots. It's there because of stacking. So what we are going to do here, we are going to select those and erase. And there we go. Just there, erase. And of course, we can do this throughout the entire image if we wish to. So if I just zoom in and move around, and typically, let me come over here. This would be some of the stuff I might remove. Little bits of dirt, little bits of dust. When you're stacking or when you're doing any type of macro shot, dust is an absolute pain. It really is. Okay, let's go back to fit the screen. 
just erase that and they're gone brilliant it is a nice piece of software and for basic edits like that that's all i would probably do with these images but we do have a lot of other stuff we've got real light we've got atmosphere sun rays let's have a look at sun rays place the sun center let's put him up here somewhere okay so we can do things like this if you wish to of course you don't have to okay but you do have all things like that you got dramatic mood let's have a look at mood choose a lot oh it's like basically like look so cinematic toning that one's not bad but we want to reduce that down by half at least there we go i'm actually going to keep that one you got the portrait down here we're going to play that in a minute okay but again you got the dodge and burn clone you got all the tools you would have in any other software now like i said before a lot of the ai features are for portraiture and stuff like that because again the ai isn't trained on macro so for that we're going to edit this shot here so this shot is of kirsty when she had the tarantula on her and we are going to have a play with this one now so let's go into the presets uh, let's have a look experimental burned film is what i found i like this burned film look i did like this one we're going to use that at 100 percent go to my burned look and I'm just going to scale it up a little bit more just to remove that burnt look that was on the eye. And there we go. We're going to come back to, let's try the enhance. You can see there, I'm not going to push it too much. And it's the same thing in most software. Don't push it too much. If you go 100% and everything, it's going to look so fake. We really don't need that. But there's the before and after. So that's just enhancing it a little bit. And do we have any noise that needs removing? Let's have a look. To be fair, it's a very clean image. This was shot on the EOS R, so it is actually quite a clean image. What I want to do, though, is come down to the portrait. So we've got portrait lights broker. That doesn't really work on this image. That's if you've got things in the background and it can blur it out. What I'm going to play with is the face. So we're going to uh, face light. That's going to increase the brightness on her face. And do take note that all of this is happening without me doing any kind of masking. We can slim the face as well. So we put it up, just leave it a few seconds for it to do its calculation. Okay, that's obviously too much, so I'll probably bring it down to about 40. Okay, so there's the before and after. We have skin AI. So this is going to help to make the skin just a little bit better. Remove the shine. Again, we don't want to go too much. Skin defects removal. And what's nice about this is it, it removes defects, but keeps uh, freckles in. I was worried it might remove all the freckles, which would make it look unnatural. But it doesn't actually do that, which is uh, not bad. Body isn't really going to work on this image because we don't have the body in there. Okay, let's go to the face AI. So we're going back to the face AI. We're going to play with the eyes. Let's play with the eyes now. So we can change the irises. I don't generally like to do that. She's got gorgeous eyes as it is, so it's not needed. Um, let's have a look here. We'll pop some of that up we can enlarge the eyes a little bit i'll rarely go above 10 when doing this slot red eye move not needed improve eyebrows is really not needed she's got well she's gorgeous so it's not needed mouth lip saturation so we can bump up the saturation of the lips and on the redness okay let's do a before and after so there's before and after but again all of this is without doing any kind of masking another thing we can do is work with layers so i'm going to click on the layer here and i'm going to load up one of my textures let's bump down that opacity all the way down switch it to a soft light okay and we're going to go to the masking because again we don't want it on a face so we're going to remove that from the face and there we go there we go very quickly and easily i've just edited that image in luminar neo if we come back to the catalog now again we have different things we have hdr merge that's not something i shoot or use got panorama stitching as well again that's not something i do but if you do that luminar neo will support those types of editing so that is luminar neo it's basically an all-in-one image editing platform and I'm happy to say it works. Now, anyone who watched my last video will know what I'm talking about. They've come a long way since that version. And I can safely say that I can recommend Luminar Neo to anyone 
who doesn't want to pay for the subscription from Adobe, maybe you've got issues with it, um, sometimes it crashes, it's Adobe. Luminar Neo is an alternative to those pieces of software and it works, it's great. So yeah, I am genuinely impressed with Luminar Neo. They've added all the things that I wanted from when I tested before. So you've got the catalog and everything in there like you have with Lightroom and it hasn't crashed out. It's done the job. It's worked the images. It's done its magic. You've got focus stacking in there as well as all the other things like the AI sharpen, the panoramic, the HDR merge. You've got all of that in there. And again, it has done a good job with stacking. So I can highly recommend Luminar Neo if you're just wanting one piece of software that does it all. If you are interested in Luminar Neo, then scan the QR code here or go to the link in the description. Again, you can save 10% on an annual subscription, but it is a massive leap from the last time I used it and it is pretty fun to use. And some of the creative stuff you can do with it is fantastic. I want to thank Skyline for sending over Luminar Neo for me to have a look and to review. And I want to thank them for sponsoring this video. But that's where I shall leave this one. My name's Stuart Wood. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. But as always, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you for sticking to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, then please subscribe and click the like button. It really does help out the channel. I want to thank my Patreon supporters for their continued support in supporting me and this channel. If you're interested in joining Patreon, then check in the description below this video for a link to Patreon. If you want to continue watching my macro journey, then click one of the videos in front of you now.